Hello, everyone, and welcome to USM Lead Domination High Yield Tutorial number 13. We have amazing high yield information. But before I begin, please, please subscribe to the channel. Let this free knowledge go viral. Let's uh, support this mission of spreading free knowledge everywhere and supporting and helping people. Okay, so for this session, I want to start with this high yield question, which is a 47 year old female on Bactrim being treated for UTI presents with abdominal pain radiating to the back. Her CT of the abdomen is shown below, and what lab test will confirm your diagnosis? Is it an ALKFAS, lipase, urinalysis, or D-dimer? And it's based on the CT image right here that you're seeing through the abdomen. So what, is, what lab test would confirm the diagnosis? And we'll come back to this high yield question at the very end of this very short high yield tutorial. Okay, so what I want to talk about is I want to do an acute abdomen series. This is just part one of the acute abdomen. We're going to talk about three major diagnoses, which is acute cholecystitis, acute pancreatitis, and acute pyelonephritis. And we'll start with acute cholecystitis, which, uh, and these are the CT images. On the left side, you have a normal appearance of the gallbladder. On the right side is an image of a, a patient with acute cholecystitis. And as you know, Acute cholecystitis is acute infection or inflammation of the gallbladder. It's usually, there's a calculus type of cholecystitis and an acalculus type of cholecystitis. The calculus type is usually due to a gallstone that impacts and obstructs a cystic duct that then results in inflammation, gallbladder wall thickening, and then obviously infection. Now, acalculus cholecystitis is when you have acute cholecystitis without gallstones. So this happens in critically ill patients like those that are in the ICU. It usually happens secondary to gallbladder stasis, infection, sometimes with a CMV virus. Uh, and again, this is seen in very critically ill patients like those that are in the ICU. And oftentimes on the USMD, they will tell you that the patient is in the ICU. And typically this presents with fever, right upper quadrant pain, and something called Murphy's sign. So when you are doing an ultrasound exam on a patient, you're you know putting the transducer on the right upper quadrant, there's pain on palpation or pressure with the transducer with inspiratory arrest in breathing. That's called Murphy sign. That's a very characteristic uh, sign that we see in patients with acute cholecystitis. They can also have referred pain to their right shoulder. That's usually due to irritation of the phrenic nerve that can occur in acute cholecystitis. So don't be surprised on the USMLE if they, if right shoulder pain or left, you know, right shoulder pain, excuse me, is part of the clinical vignette. Now I wanna to come to this normal image of the gallbladder. Remember here, this fluid filled ovoid structure is the gallbladder. That's a normal gallbladder right here adjacent to the liver in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. Remember, this is the right side of the body. This is the left side of the body, okay? And if you look at a patient with acute cholecystitis, notice how distended the gallbladder is. Usually if the gallbladder is more than four centimeters in distension, that's a sign of acute cholecystitis. And then notice all this dark hypoattenuation around the gallbladder. This is pericholcystic edema, right? So, or pericholcystic fluid. So this is another sign of acute cholecystitis. Okay, so this is what acute cholecystitis would look like on a CT exam. Now, normally you're not gonna do a CT exam. And in fact, uh, you're actually going to do a ultrasound because ultrasound is the best way that we know how to diagnose acute cholecystitis. Typically what you're gonna see is this is an ultrasound image of the gallbladder here. You have this fluid filled structure. This dark area is fluid or bile. This is anechoic fluid or bile within this gallbladder. Notice again that it's very distended. And these calipers here are measuring the gallbladder wall, which should only measure about three millimeters, but we're seeing that it measures six millimeters. So we have gallbladder wall thickening. We have a little bit of edema around the gallbladder, you know, so gallbladder distension, gallbladder wall thickening, pericholcystic edema. And here on this transverse image, we have this hyperechoic or bright foci with posterior shadowing, meaning that, you know, posterior to these, this hyperechoic or bright structure, there's dark signal. And this is related to gallstones or the calcifications associated with these gallstones. So we have gallstones in the gallbladder lumen. So again, these are just findings of acute cholecystitis. A positive Murphy sign can, it, can also be elicited. You palpate you know, with the transducer, the right upper quadrant, and there's pain and inspiratory arrest with breathing. Those are all signs of acute cholecystitis, okay? You can also do a HIDA scan, which is a nuclear medicine scan. If you don't see the gallbladder on the HIDA scan, that is diagnostic pretty much of acute cholecystitis. So that's uh, typically what acute cholecystitis will look like on imaging. Now I wanna to come to acute pancreatitis, which is a different diagnosis. Okay, typically these patients present with acute abdominal pain that radiates to the back. 
Okay, and it's often associated with increased lab levels of serum amylase and lipase. And you have characteristic findings on CT imaging, which I'm going to show you right here. It's typically due to the two most common causes of acute pancreatitis are gallstones, actually, which we just discussed, you know, and alcohol, especially in America. Alcohol is a major cause. There are other causes like drugs, like, you know, protease inhibitors, steroids, sulfa drugs, uh, things like uh, infections like mumps, uh, autoimmune diseases, uh, trauma. These are all causes of acute pancreatitis. But you know, the most common causes, again, are gallstones and alcohol. And what we see here, I want to show you a normal image of the pancreas on the left side and an abnormal image of the pancreas on the right side. So here, this is the normal pancreas. Remember that the, the majority of the pancreas is a retroperitoneal structure, except for the pancreatic tail, which is right here, which is not retroperitoneal. But it's a structure here that lives anterior to the aorta and the IVC, right? So remember, the top of the image is anterior. The bottom of the image is posterior, right? So this structure right here that's here along the midline, this is the pancreas. And no notice that it's, you know, this is a normal appearance of the pancreas. This dark area here is the, you know, the fat, right? The fat in the peritoneum or the retroperitoneum. Now, if we take a look here at this image of acute pancreatitis, notice that there's pancreatic enlargement. This pancreas is double the size of this pancreas here, and there's all this fuzziness in the fat around the pancreas. We call that peripancreatic fat stranding or edema around the pancreas. So you have stranding of the fat around the pancreas and it's markedly enlarged. So this is a nice example of what acute pancreatitis would look like, okay? There are complications associated with pancreatitis such as, you know, pseudocyst formation and pancreatic abscess. You can get pancreatic necrosis where you get lack of enhancement in the pancreatic tissue. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, hypocalcemia, hemorrhage, you know, there's all sort of complications. Splenic vein thrombosis can be another complication, but this is a nice example of what acute pancreatitis would look like on a CT scan. The last uh, entity I want to talk about is acute pyelonephritis or infection of the renal parenchyma, okay? And this is typically, this is going to present with fever, uh, coastal vertebral anger tenderness or flank pain, and pyuria or white blood cells or white bread cell casts in the urine, okay? So pyuria is white blood cells in the urine. That's very telling for acute pyelonephritis. Risk factors associated with this are people that have indwelling catheters in them, you know, diabetic patients, pregnant patients, even people that have chronic, you know, vesicoureteral reflux. These all predispose to pyelonephritis. This typically occurs from hematogenous spread from somewhere else or an ascending urinary tract infection, typically from E. coli. So those are the culprits for acute pyelonephritis. And I want to show you a normal appearance of the kidney on the left on this CT image and an abnormal appearance of the kidney on the right in this patient with acute pyelonephritis. So if we take a look here, this is a normal kidney. Notice that you have this bright or um, hyper attenuating area here along the renal cortex. This more darker area is the renal medulla emptying into the calyces and the collecting system. This is the dark area, which is urine or fluid here. This is a normal appearance of the kidney. This is the right kidney and this is the left kidney right here. Now, if we take a look here on this patient with acute pyelonephritis, notice that there's renal enlargement. This right kidney is larger than the left kidney, right? And again, there's this straining. The fat around the kidney looks fuzzy, just like we saw in pancreatitis. They're here, this is, we call this perinephric fat straining. And the major finding here is that instead of the kidney being bright, we have these wedge-shaped dark areas along the periphery of the cortex. We call that a striated nephrogram, right? So this hypo, these wedge-shaped dark areas are areas of infection or pyelonephritis. This is a striated nephrogram because we don't have the normal bright uh, attenuation of the renal cortex. So when you see dark wedge-shaped or triangular areas along the periphery of the kidney, that's indicative of acute pyelonephritis, okay? Uh, so I think that's helpful for that. Uh, these are the USMLE must-know points. So again, for acute cholecystitis, you can have calculus versus acalculus cholecystitis. It can be caused from gallstones impacting the cystic duct, or it can be from biostasis or infection without the presence of, of stones, right? And that's typically in like ICU critically ill patients. It'll present with fever, right upper quadrant pain, perhaps pain radiating to the shoulder, and you have that positive Murphy sign that we talked about. The imaging findings are typically done on ultrasound. You can do a CT, but ultrasound is the mainstay of how we diagnose this. It's typically with gallbladder distension, gallbladder wall thickening, pericocystic edema, and a positive Murphy sign. You can have something called a gallstone ileus, which is a fistula that occurs between the gallbladder and the, and the bowel where a stone enters the GI tract and you end up getting 
a stone impacted at the ileocecal valve, you get a small bowel obstruction and you get pneumobilia um, as well. That's a gallstone ileus, which is a complication of acute cholecystitis. Acute pancreatitis uh, typically is caused by alcohol, gallstones, uh, typically meds like sulfa drugs, you know, protease inhibitors, steroids. Typically this is gonna present with pain radiating to the back. And the key is amylase and lipase are gonna be elevated. And lipase is more specific for pancreatitis than amylase is, okay? On imaging findings, you're gonna see on a CT, pancreatic enlargement with peripancreatic stranding or surrounding edema. And there are many complications associated with this, including pseudocyst, pancreatic necrosis, a pancreatic abscess, and splenic vein thrombosis. And finally, acute pyelonephritis. This is infection or an acute infection of the kidney. This typically is a result of ascending infection from a UTI or hematogenous hematogenous spread to the kidney. The kidney is a very vascular organ. Typically, it's gonna present with fever, flank pain, or costal vertebral angle tenderness, and white blood cells or pyuria in the urine, okay? On a CT scan, you're gonna have that striated nephrogram, those wedge-shaped dark areas along the periphery of the kidney. And complications include chronic pyelonephritis, a renal abscess, and possibly urosepsis. So let's come back to this high yield question, which is a 47-year-old female who's on Bactrim being treated for UTI, presents with abdominal pain radiating to the back. Her CT is shown below. What test will confirm the diagnosis? Well, first of all, this is a female who's on Bactrim. So this is a sulfa drug, remember? Sulfa is a risk factor for pancreatitis. Uh, a pain radiating to the back, that's a characteristic finding of acute pancreatitis. And if you look at the CT, notice that there's pancreatic enlargement and all this peripancreatic edema and peripancreatic fast training. This is a nice case of acute pancreatitis. Of course, we know that lipase is gonna be elevated here. Lipase is more specific than amylase. So the right answer here is gonna be lipase. I hope that was helpful. Uh, tune in next week for another high yield USMLE domination tutorial. Please share this, let this information go viral and thank you so much for your attention.